in medication safety. Our target audience, you, uh, all healthcare provider that are included in medication safety process. This is the agenda for course for today. We have two sessions. I will start with first session. Uh, each session um, uh, will be consist of three uh, parts and we will finally have um, a home message. So what do you know about medication safety? Anyone know? Can you share your experience? Of course, everyone at least um, uh, know this term uh, previously. If you don't know, just listen to this situation. When you discuss with the patient uh, newly admitted and know the history of medication, which is known as medication reconciliation, when we check the drug-drug and drug-food interaction, when we monitor the patient to check if there is any adverse drug effect from the uh, event from uh, the medication, and when we store medication uh, separate from each other uh, to avoid the mix-up. All of this situation consider a medication safety. So any healthcare provider deal with medication safety by uh, any way uh, on daily basis. Can you look to this uh, column? Medication error reporting, standard administration time, safe in injection practice, drug allergy, stability of IV preparation, drug interaction, dosing adjustment, drug recall, evaluation, medication reconciliation, patient education, medication storage, all of this and many other terms included under medication safety. So it's a big term. Hierarchy. Um, Usually there is a medication safety program national um, in each um, country. Here in Saudi Arabia, there is a Saudi medication safety program. So all organization have medication safety program will be under the umbrella of the Saudi medication safety program. Each organization should, should have a medication safety committee, committee or even subcommittee under BNT and headed by medication safety officer. Let's discuss some uh, points for the history of medication uh, safety. To err is human. It's a report from uh, Institute of um, uh, Medicine, IOM, um, uh, on uh, 1999. Uh, this report uh, really considered a landmark report in medication safety. Uh, there is many things in the report, but simply that, uh, according to the report, uh, about from 44,000 to 98,000 preventable deaths per year from medical error, which is equal to um, uh, two uh, jumbo um, airplane uh, crashed uh, two times weekly. This considered a huge number. Also, more people die in a given year as a result of medical error than motor vehicle accident, breast cancer, or even HIV. So what is the key elements of medication use? Patient information, drug information, communication of uh, drug information, drug labeling, packaging, nomenclature, uh, storage, standardization, distribution, uh, uh, drug use monitoring, environmental factor, staff, staff competency and education, patient education, and quality process and risk management. Previously, there is an international medication safety network. Uh, first meeting, which done on 2006, Saudi Arabia was a member. Uh, all the members at the time uh, have uh, a pledge that they will uh, cooperate to uh, improve medication safety and they will uh, promote for increasing knowledge of medication safety, improving medication safety practices. After that, 2008, uh, um, initiation of Saudi Medication Safety Center. Um, one of the study done by um, 
general administration of pharmaceutical department, Dr. Yusuf al Omi at the time. Um, actually, they did a national medication safety uh, program and they uh, set uh, um, a goal of a strategic plan. The first one uh, is to provide complete pharmaceutical care with safety and best practices. And this includes uh, many things related to the program. program to formulate uh, a committee in each organization, to update a system of reporting of medication error and um, uh, drug quality uh, and uh, ADR system, uh, to start the medication, uh, basic medication safety education course, uh, to assign a medication safety officer in hospital, um, also uh, for evaluation uh, of the um, medication safety um, um, assessment program from ISMP, and finally for drug information resources for medication safety. All of this, of this um, uh, make um, yeah, yeah, more um, uh, awareness for uh, medication safety uh, in Saudi Arabia. So the goal of of uh, PMS program is to enhance the knowledge of healthcare provider, to promote for safe medication practices, and to promote a just culture for reporting and managing medication error. Medication safety is a journey, starting from drug evaluation uh, to add a medication into the uh, uh, formulary and for also um, storage of medication uh, in pharmacy store, uh, prescribing uh, medication by prescriber, uh, dispensing medication and preparing from pharmacy, and administration by nursing, education and counseling by patient. So it's a journey. This journey should be safe in every step. Try to be, um, have a, a rule in this journey so we can have a safe journey for medication. Medication safety is everyone's responsibility. My voice is clear. Everyone has a role to play in medication safety. We promise. So, we promise to do our part in improving the medication safety. How about you? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا And if anyone saved a life as if he saved the life of the all mankind. Thank you. This is the first part, introduction. Okay. I will start with the second part which is prohibited abbreviation, symbols, and those designation. Can you see this abbreviation? It's widely used in our community. In all our written communication, you, you can, we can see this abbreviation. So why people generally um, prefer abbreviation? Maybe to save time? And also maybe there is a, like agreement for the uh, meaning of some abbreviation. So no need to repeat it. So abbreviation now in um, all our um, um, uh, written communication. It's also now in uh, medication, but it's another story in medication. You cannot guess because if you abbreviate, you affect patient safety. How this what we will discuss in this topic. So by the end of this topic, you will identify error prone abbreviation, symbols and those designation. To know their effects on medication safety and to recognize the strategy to minimize risks. So Error prone abbreviation is referred to abbreviation, symbols, or those designations that have been shown to cause error and affect medication safety. Orders that are eligible or contain error prone abbreviation should not be carried out. 
I will give you two minutes just to try to read this slide. I think all of us can read. Let's read together. The power of the human mind, according to a research at Cambridge University, it does not matter in what order the letters in a word are. The only important thing is that the first and last letter be at the right place. The rest can be a total mess and you can still read it without problem. This is because the human mind does not read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. So what do you think about this slide? This is what they call a confirmation bias. This means that we can see one um, uh, letter or one word and we can read it um, in a right way, although it's written wrongly. The same may happen during um, dealing with abbreviation in medical, um, uh, in medic in, uh, in medication. They may be an error, but you will read it in a different way that you think is correct. Let's have some examples. Try to guess, please. SSRI, what does it mean? Maybe it's a sliding scale regular insulin. Others can read selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Indral. 40 milligram. If you can see, there is no, no space between L and 40, so it may be confusing as in draw 140 milligram. The gritol, 300 milligram or 1300 milligram. Can you read this? It's Amarel, anti diabetic medication. Two milligram or twelve milligram, confusing, yes. Okay, using um, some abbreviation, common abbreviation like U, which is stand for unit. Can we write U in a medical file like U? No, we should not write it. Why? Because maybe it will be confused with. Any other things like uh, zero, which may increase the dose tenfold. So it should be written clearly unit. The same IU may be confusing as 10. So we should write international unit. You know what does it mean? We know it's once daily, but Maybe it will be confusing with QID every other day or four times daily. So we should write daily. QOD may be confused as QD once daily if the O is not clear. So we should write every other day. Hmm. Uh, Take this example, can you read? 1.0 milligram. Yes, it's clear. But why we wrote this zero? Actually, this zero called in as trailing zero. Trailing zero should be avoided because if we write trailing zero, the point, the decimal point may be unclear uh, if, the, if the words are not clear. So it could be written, in it could be um, uh, mistaken as 10 milligram which makes the dose tenfold increase. So it should be right, written as one, one milligram. So no trailing zero should be written at all. Point five, the right is 0 0.5. This is a leading zero. Leading zero is a must because if it's not written, this decimal point may be not clear at all. And instead of uh, 0.5 milligram, it will be read as five milligram. So generally, uh, no trailing zero and leading zero should be 
written. Okay, uh, for microgram, it could be confused and mistaken as milligram, which make thousand fold uh, error. So it should be written as MCG. DC, it's a widely um, common used abbreviation for discontinuation of medication, maybe for discharge. And this actually uh, reported and happened before premature discontinuation of medication uh, because they wrote DC for uh, this before the, uh, after the medication, they mean discharge. CC or cubic centimeter, it's no more used now, it should be written clearly ML because C, uh, CC may be um, confused as uh, zero. HS, the same for home stay or half strengths. When all of us know, of course, subcutaneous is. Um, but it may be um, uh, confused with uh, once daily. These marks, which mean greater than or more than or less than, which may be misunderstanding uh, with the uh, opposite um, uh, meaning intended. Also, it could be um, uh, mistaken as uh, uh, one or zero. This is a slash. Slash is written between two concentration. So it may be added like one to one of them. So it should be written pair, not slash. For medication name abbreviation, it's the same. Can we abbreviate medication names? No, we should not. This is an example. MSO4 mistaken as morphine sulfate or magnesium sulfate. A big difference. AZT, azathioprine, maybe Zidovudin, Asterionam. For nitro drip, maybe nitroglycerin infusion or sodium nitroproside. So, for all orders and all medication-related documentation, whatever, printed or handwriting, medication names must be written full, must not be abbreviated. We should place an adequate space be between the medication name, the dose and unit of measures. So no mixing. This is um, a list we, from GCI. Um, it's usually uh, considered the minimum list, the minimum list that should be uh, available in each organization. In uh, some organizations, they, uh, they uh, called it, um, do not use list. Remember this slide. Now we understand that our human mind can read abbreviation and um, uh, understand it uh, that what's in our um, uh, our mind which is maybe not the correct meaning or, uh, or prescribed now we know that uh, abbreviation really affect medication safety and patient safety so please abbreviation may save minutes but prohibiting abbreviation may save lives so please do not abbreviate safety Thank you. Now we will go to the third part of the first decision, adverse drug event. During patient uh, counseling, just we need to know that uh, um, uh, the intended effect of medication not only reach the patient, but also other um, effects which is unintended, maybe uh, other harm if, um, effect harm or just unintended. This is what we, we mean by adverse drug reaction. By the end of this topic, you should be able to understand the process of identifying, documenting, and reporting of adverse drug reaction, ADR, to know the role of healthcare professional in reporting 
and to understand the importance of reporting. Okay, so what is adverse drug event? It's simply event related to drug. But we mean the event is injury from a drug related intervention and it includes both the adverse drug reaction and medication error. Okay, so this is um, uh, adverse drug event, which include ADR, medication error and near misses. Medication error and near misses in every organization, there is simply um, a committee uh, of, uh, medic uh, in some organization called the medication use process error or uh, medication safety committee or medication error subcommittee, but it takes another uh, way in reporting. ADR is different. Okay, for the hierarchy, Saudi Medication Safety Center, medication safety program in organization which is um, uh, presented by um, Medication Safety Committee, BNT Committee, headed by a Medication Safety Officer. And usually there is adverse drug reaction team or subcommittee, which is reported to Medication Safety uh, Program. Okay, so what is EDR? EDR is a response to a medicinal product, which is noxious and unintended. It's not the effect that we need for the patient, and so we write this medication. It occurs at a doses normally used for prophylaxis, diagnosis, or therapy of a disease, or for the restoration, correction, or modification of physiological function. This means that all the, uh, the list, uh, or this list, that should be excluded from EDR. If it's expected or well-known reaction, if it's result from drug withdrawal, drug abuse, accidental poisoning, overdose complication, all of this not EDR. EDR include allergy and EDR from other system. Many people confuse that they think that EDR only allergy. So they want to report allergy from medication, from um, antibiotics, but ADR is uh, the scope is more than the allergy. Allergy under, uh, which is hypersensitivity to induced by exposure to allergen, result in harmful immunological action and subsequent exposure, which usually includes skin manifestation like rash, uh, and if severe, it will lead to hypersensitivity and need special uh, manipulation. So our rule as a health scale provider, first to monitor the patient for side effect after giving any medication. If there is any uh, adverse drug reaction should be reported within 24 hours. Regarding our patient should be monitored through the uh, physician when the patient uh, revisit or by pharmacist during counseling or even by uh, patient when uh, calling, if he feel any, uh, we should encourage and educate patient that if he um, feel any um, uh, unintended effect to contact uh, the physician. Healthcare provider must document this um, effect on the clinical record and implement appropriate follow-up. Uh, follow so our role to monitor, to report and uh, to document and to follow up. Saudi uh, Food and Drug Administration, a pharmacovigilance program, they encourage um, all healthcare providers to report the adverse drug reaction, uh, but they, um, they nominate adverse drug reaction to report not every ADR, but just the serious. The serious, we can expect that serious ADR, including those leading to death, life-threatening, significant disability, or hospitalization. All of this under serious adverse drug reaction. Do you know this photo? Can you see these children? These children actually has um, uh, a disease or ADR called facomelia. Facomelia actually um, is uh, loss of limbs, which is claimed by a company after um, after using of uh, thalidomide medication by a pregnant woman, um, uh, this medication uh, really effective to avoiding 
uh, effective to avoiding um, uh, the morning sickness. After reports of this um, about uh, 10,000 to 20,000 children who was born with loss of limbs and 40% only still alive from this from these children. Uh, we cannot um, um, forget this salidomide. Um, it's a, a lead to a significant and a serious harm, which lead to this and significant disability. Uh, just to know that this medication uh, at the time recalled, but in some countries stay three months later of recall in other country and lead to more um, uh, ADRs. So uh, to know the importance of uh, reporting that uh, it will protect others. Okay, healthcare provider will report serious adverse drug event severe or fatal, uncommon or unusual, drug interaction, reaction to newly marketed drug within three years of entry into the market. Actually, ADR is um, uh, a rich area for research, especially for a new medication. Uh, there is a case reports of some uh, ADRs. So after that, they doing a uh, research and collect the data uh, to um, uh, make the percent uh, for EDR for this medication. Uh, we should know also that EDR is starting from clinical trials to, uh, uh, as we know, clinical trials when done um, on, um, uh, on patients, volunteer in the beginning. So uh, this will assess uh, both efficacy and safety. For the safety, it's reported by EDR. For categorizing ADR, type of harm, um, it's category from E, F, G, and H, and I, um, according to the um, type of harm, which may result that um, just need for treatment or intervention. Uh, this intervention may lead to um, initial or prolong prolonged hospitalization. The reaction may be lead to permanent harm, may be result to a near-death event that need um, intervention to sustain life and may lead to this. This is simply a flow chart if we start in uh, adverse drug uh, reaction in uh, reaction reporting system in an organization, we should follow this flow chart. After adverse drug reaction occur, Healthcare professional will address patient's need. First, address patient needs. First, to inform the uh, physician to assist the patient, to save the patient before reporting, of course. After that, we will assess if this effect due to medication error at the time we will report as medication error, or it's just uh, adverse drug reaction, unintended effect with usual doses. Uh, at the time, the physician will document this in the patient file and progress note and may need to educate the patient that they should uh, know what is allergic for medication and what or uh, this medication causing this side effect to him. So he, he should know it's part of patient education and counseling. After that, EZR should be reported. This is the part for healthcare professional. Now we will go to the part for ADR team and medication safety program. What we will do with these reports? What is the importance? ADR report should be reported to the ADR chair or maybe to the quality um, uh, department or medication safety officer for check for documentation, revision. It will be need a review from clinical pharmacy to assess the um, severity and the causality of adverse drug reaction discussed in EDR team meeting, send the quarterly report to um, Medication Safety Center or Saudi FDA. Okay. Then we later they make uh, analysis for this um, uh, report. Sometimes they recall for a medication uh, or they collect the data for, um, uh, for uh, documentation. 
uh, an orange scale. It's a, a common scale that used uh, by clinical pharmacists uh, for EDR uh, analysis just to check the causality um, uh, for this EDR with the medication. And simply, does this adverse drug reaction uh, definitely from this medication or doubtfully or uh, not related at all? It's a 10 question that they should answer by yes, no, or don't know. And there is a, um, a point, a plus or minus for each answer. Like if there is any previous conclusive reports, does this reaction happen after uh, the medication given? Does Is, is there any other uh, reasons that may cause this ADR? If we make a re-challenge for this medication, if there is any objective evidence uh, of or the, if the patient have a similar reaction uh, similar to this ADR. After that, we calculate the total score. Then we analyze if the score is more than nine, equal to or more than nine, so it's definite ADR related to this medication. If from five to eight, it's a probable. If less, less is possible or uh, doubtful. Usually, it's between probable and possible. Uh, so any um, healthcare provider uh, want to report ADR, they can report. And after that, we make analysis. Uh, another scale, Hartwig's severity assessment scale, uh, this assess the severity of the ADR. Uh, they give a seven level, uh, level one and two mild, level three and four moderate, and level five, six, seven severe. Uh, if the ADR uh, occurred but required no change in treatment, maybe uh, there is a harm happened, and this harm have a degree. Maybe it lead to a permanent harm, or maybe lead to death. All of this, there is a, um, a grades or levels of uh, or levels of severity. This is an example of ADR report for those who want to initiate the program in their organization. This is the important information should be available. It's simple direct, you can add any points according to your uh, organization. Uh, the date, the diagnosis of the patient should be uh, available, uh, name of drug or suspected, dose out of administration, a date ordered, uh, what is the reaction to be described. As we can see here, uh, maybe it's rash, anaphylaxis, others, um, extrapyramidal, bronchospasm, angina. Uh, how we manage? Does we uh, just change the dose? Does we uh, just DC the medication uh, if an antidote given or not? And the reporter should be um, write his or her name. This is the form uh, in Saudi FDA pharmacovigilance program. This form actually uh, before uh, we report uh, through email, after that uh, they did um, uh, an excellent step that they um, make uh, uh, one presenter, EDR representative from each organization. They have account with um, uh, Saudi FDA and they can report uh, the EDR in each organization electronically uh, to the Saudi FDA. And after that, Saudi FDA uh, actually um, for encourage uh, for reporting, they make like appreciation for uh, hospitals uh, with the number of ADR reports and they uh, put it in their um, uh, uh, Saudi FDA site. So finally, um, ADR reporting, who should report? Any healthcare provider should report. Nurse, pharmacist, physician, clinical pharmacist, when, within 24 hours, how, via the um, reporting system in your organization, either uh, or electronically, what to report, any event that you suspect um, uh, uh, from medication, why we report for our safety, for patient safety. So remember that reporting is a key to improve medication safety. Thank you. So uh, now we end the uh, first session.
uh, my part. Now we will go to the second session. Uh, can we take, uh, Mr. Alec, please, can we take just a uh, few minutes uh, a break? Of course, of course, of course. Okay. We'll take uh, 10 minutes, okay? Okay. Okay, we'll take 10 minutes as a break. Thank you all. Thank you.
طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحن ان شاء الله كده دقائق واحنا نبدا بالسيشن الثاني من الكورس انا حبيت انوه انه حنرسل لكل واحد من البارتيسيبنت ايفالويشن لينك بليز ايفالويت اس ان شاء الله عشان بس هذا بيدفعنا دائما انه نتحسن بالشكل الافضل وشويه ان شاء الله والدكتوره ايمان حتقدم الدكتوره دينا شكرا لكم When you are ready, Dr. Iman, Dr. Dina, we are ready. Unmute if you are ready. السلام عليكم. عليكم السلام. السلام عليكم. Uh, thanks for your attendance. Uh, now uh, we are going to the second part of our session uh, by our uh, speaker, Dr. Adina. I will represent Dr. Adina. Dr. Adina Kamal, Baccalaureus uh, CBHQ, BS CBHQ, TQM Diploma, working in Saudi German Hospital Medina as a medication safety officer, quality improvement pharmacist, and antibiotic stewardship coordinator. Uh, Baccalaureus of uh, pharmace Pharmaceutical Care uh, Science 2007. Uh, she got total quality management on 2014. She got certified Board of Healthcare Quality on March 2015 and recertified at uh, 2018. She got certificate on antimicrobial stewardship on 2019. Um, uh, welcome, Dr. Adina. This is. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good, good afternoon. Um, I'm very happy today to, um, uh, to cheer with Dr. Ayman in uh, medic basic medication safety. Uh, thanks, Dr. Ayman, for you. Uh, uh, let us start with a very important um, issue today with the medication error. Medication error is uh, one of very important uh, issue. This is uh, essential safety requirements. This is four points today. We will start with uh, three points. I will uh, start with you with uh, medication error and near misses. And also I will give you uh, some points about uh, high alert medication and the lookalikes on the eye. And uh, the last thing is hazards medication and uh, chemicals. But this is will be later. By the end of this uh, lectures, we will know that what is the definition of medication error, classification and categories, causes of medication errors, how can we decrease the medication error, and medication review and reconciliation of patient, and who will can make report for medication error. Let us start with the definition of medication error. What is the medication error? Medication error is a preventable event that can cause 
or lead to inappropriate use of medication. Any inappropriate use for medication can cause harm for the patient. This is no with error, medication error. But we have two types of error, near misses and actual error. What is the differences between near miss and actual error? In simply near miss, it know with any error happened but not reached to the patient. So a lot of errors classified with near miss in a lot of things, prescribing, uh, transcribing, dispensing, preparing, preparing, uh, labeling, packaging, a lot of things. But this is not reached to the patient. This is means near misses. But actual error, it means this error happened in all this process, starting from procurement and storage and also implant medications, but reached to the patient. It means this is actual error. So a mistake in prescribing, dispensing, or plant medication administration that occurred and reached to the patient cause harm for the patient or may not cause harm for the patient, it means this is actual error. This is classif this classification of medication error. There are a lot of classification of errors, but this is in simply, this is classification on the stages of the, um, medication error and types of error. At the stages of error, of medications, this is at ordering, prescribing, transcribing, and dispensing, and also at administration or monitoring. Also, another classification we can catch the mistake during wrong medication, wrong dose, wrong frequency, wrong administration, wrong route, wrong patient. And we have a lot of categories for medication errors. Two of them for near misses and the other for actual medication error. Near miss, it means the error happened but not reached to the patient. Two of them, circumstances or events with capacity to cause the error, it means in the environment around during the preparation of the medication lead to cause error and other error happened but not reached to the patient. For example, error according to or uh, related to LESA, it means the storage when the, um, in, when the, in, during the preparation of medication, the um, storage not suitable. So during the preparation, mistake during the preparation lead to error. But this is safeguard or the error discovered before reaching the patient. This is circumstance or event with capacity to cause an error. Another issue or another category, error occurred but not reached to the patient. For example, doctor ordered one antibiotic, for example, cefuroxine, but the pharmacist or um, um, dispensed or preparing already uh, as deem, but during the double check or during from pharmacist or from nursing, catch the mistake before before reach to the patient. This is near misses. Other categories related to uh, actual medication error. It means this is error happened already, but reach to the patient. Like error happened, and this is degree in the heart. Error happened, but not cause harm. How come? Like patient received extra dose from uh, paracetamol. This is error, but not cause harm for the patient. Error reached to the patient and required monitoring. This is, uh, um, this is error in the also error reached to the patient and the result in temporary harm and required intervention. 
this is category, another category, more dangerous than other. It will reach to the patient and result in temporary harm and initial or prolonged hospitalization. It means, for example, patient admitted in the hospital and doctor ordered for him uh, insulin with a special dose for him, a special dose for him, and ask it for uh, one uh, or um, uh, 20 um, 28 insulin, 20 insulin, and he need uh, 28 uh, from insulin, and by mistake, he need um, the, the nurse give him extra dose from insulin, and after the, after that he uh, lead to um, the, the dose of insulin extra so he need to uh, he received already a lot of um, ex extra insulin so this is lead to hypoglycemia for this patient so need uh, so he already bought uh, and stay in um, hospital due to receive wrong dose this is prolonged hospitalization due to received um, wrong dose of medication. Error reached to the patient result in permanent patient harm. Error reached to the patient and require intervention necessary to sustain life. This is category more difficult than the others. The last category is more than difficult. This is lead to more um, just investigation or more than difficult investigation after that this is error happened to the patient and after that lead to death this is need to rca of rca after the already patient happened this is uh, cause uh, this is um, need to investigation after this this is root cause analysis and this is called sentinel event. Sentinel event, this is catastrophe and must need to make RCA to, to know what is the, the root cause of this uh, problem. What are the reasons of medication? Do you know what is the reasons of medication error? There are a lot of errors come from medication. In reasons come from, uh, lead to medication error. What is the causes of medication error? We have factors associated with healthcare workers, like poor communications between stuff between healthcare workers, overloading, between, overloading, insufficient, um, insufficient. Um, uh, Insufficient work, insufficient workers um, between insufficient workers, uh, also um, lacking of training between stuff, lacking of training, and, and no good communications, also lack of um, experience, no good experience between them. Uh, no good drug experience between uh, between stuff. Another factors associated with patient complexity of uh, clinical um, case of for patients, uh, language barrier for the patient, hierarchy of the patient, and the factors also associated with work uh, work environment. There is no policy and procedures. There is no uh, protocols. Uh, overwork with them is, um, for the staff. Insufficient, um, uh, insufficient um, uh, equipment for the um, to make the procedures for the staff. And also, this is fa factors associated with com computerized information the system, like there is. Uh, computerized the system, but this is more advanced, so lead to uh, this is more complicated, so near to uh, need to a lot of um, uh, training for stuff, or this is uh, uh, this is old, so need to a lot of um, need to good 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 system, 
or this is no computerized system information present already in the uh, in the hospital factors associated with the system packaging labeling and this is a problem in ordering or transcribing and as in, uh, or there is a problem in high alert medications this is storage um, uh, procurement uh, transcribing or um, as, uh, um, also in lisa this will be uh, already explained in another uh, uh, issue how can we pre prevent medication errors or decrease not prevent because this is will really not preventing because we are human We can prevent this by make safeguards. But how can we make safeguards? Every hospital must make a lot of things to make safeguards, like make protocols for every for every um, procedures in the hospital, protocols, systems, computerized physician orders for everything. Uh, an adequate system, line management. And this is, you see, this is, um, uh, we have already, uh, this is uh, figures here in the um, uh, screen. This is service cheese model. This is uh, service cheese model. Uh, this is um, safeguards for every procedures to decrease the errors. To decrease the error during the um, medica medication management, we, we just already put safeguards during dispense the medication with administration, with monitoring, with prescribing during every stage of medication management until the patient receives medication, starting from storage until the patient receives medication. How can we put barriers to? receive uh, to decrease the errors until from storage until the patient receives medications. Let us start with the first barrier from storage. The first barrier already from barcode. This is the first barriers or safeguards from barcoding. When we already st uh, store the medication, uh, this is the, the best thing already to use a barcode. When we already store the high alert medication or less than medication, we must already apply the policy of high alert medication and less than medication. We will uh, later we will already uh, explain how to uh, make a storage for less and high alert. We we will use uh, labeling and uh, alerts when appropriate. Ensure labeling and um, on the bottle when you already store bottles. Um, put the face of the bottle and so you need to uh, facing the bottle forward. Second thing, when the patient admitted, make medication reconciliation. It is a very important thing to make medication reconciliation and, uh, and the document is this medication reconciliation on the phone. This is a very important thing. What is the meaning of medication reconciliation? Medication reconciliation, it means take the history of the patient when the patient already admitted in the hospital. When the patient is coming in the hospital uh, and the doctor decided to admit the patient in the hospital, he must take the uh, history of the patient uh, and take, ask him about if you're already chronic patient receive the medication before and um, take all history of the patient the last dose he already received uh, all data from the patient and the document this is this all data in the medication administration record in the file of the patient the ordering or review must be for ordering and make reviewing for patient history a uh, complete order make appropriateness uh, medication appropriateness it is very important and we have already two types of uh, medication appropriateness medication appropriateness uh, this is a rule of pharmacist and the rule also of nurse rule of pharmacist this is when during transcribing and the role of nursing during administration Role of pharmacist during the transcribing, when the pharmacist started to make the transcribing for ordering uh, on the system, if there is no computerized physician order, 
the pharmacist must be make appropriateness for medication as he already must make um, revision for the medication uh, in the check the medication those the medication or those will uh, diagnosis will uh, drug drug interaction drug food interactions this is a role of pharmacist before uh, transcribing but the role of ad, um, appropriateness for nursing during uh, before admi administration this is 10 rights for the patient i will uh, explain this during uh, uh, administration cpoe this is the best thing to uh, ordering for uh, a, a, a patient. This is computerized physician order entry. This is order um, entered on the system by doctors. So the doctor is the responsible for entering the medication on the system, computerized. Transcribing, this is how, this is if the computerized physician order not available, this is a transcribing by pharmacist. And this, in this in this uh, stage, the pharmacist will make the appropriateness for medication to be sure the the doctor already write the complete data for the patient and write the complete uh, order for uh, drug and write the or, the order of the, the drug is completed. Here the reviewing. That, that I already uh, mentioned before, medication appropriateness by pharmacist during the transcribing and the medication appropriateness by nurse. This is 10 rights before administration. During the 10 rights, the, the nurse make 10 rights for the patient, right patient, right dose, right, uh, right um, uh, frequency, right, uh, right duration, right, um, uh, right duration, right dose, right. This is 10 rights for the patient. During a preparation in the dispensing pharmacy or admixtures, if this medication will be uh, need to uh, to be uh, admixtures, and this will be under the suitable conditions. This is all the procedures. This is, this is safeguards for prepare, preparing to prevent the medication error. After preparing or dispensing the medication, this is the very important thing. This is policy of double check double check by two pharmacists to review the, the correcting of medication to be sure this is a medication is correct during receiving prepared medication by nurse this is must be also double check so the medication already reviewed by stream in the case of um, outpatients also this is double check so this is inpatient and outpatient and the licensed pharmacist will prepare the medication in the case of outpatient inpatient this is licensed uh, in outpatient this is licensed pharmacist and this is a very good system to uh, inpatient to to apply unit dose system administrations this is cpoe system for inpatient by barcoding the system. Also, alarm system. This is a good way to give nurse alarm system by the uh, timing of the dose and the timing of the administration, and they give them alarm for uh, if there is a mistake for um, uh, missing dose or alarm by, by the timing of some medications, uh, everything. Documentations. How can they document? They document everything after making uh, administration for the, the medication. So this is decrease the error of medication uh, error. Double check for everything before administration. How can they make monitoring and evaluation for us? By reporting, how can they report if there is a medication or error or, or missing of um, those? We can report. How can we report? We, if there is error, we can uh, uh, try to uh, correct the action, uh, correct the error before. And after that, we already make um, OVR and the medication error. This is within 24 hours. 
and after this documentation for everything, speak up, don't be afraid because this is safety and we can make KPIs. This is KPIs key performance improvements to know where is the um, where is the area to improve or where is the, um, the thing that can we know where is the error to make improvement uh, if there is ADRs or um, adverse drug events happen or according to error happened we can also document con continuous training and education to know what is the error and con continue to improvement and no uh, and uh, increase safety and um, uh, decrease the errors this is to decrease the errors and increase the safety for the patient and to reach good medications and decrease the error and um, prevent this is ready to be repeated thank you this is the first um, the lecture about medication error Thank you, Dr. Adina. Now we will go to the second part, second topic in the uh, session, in session two. Um, yes, I will make sure. Okay.
let us complete with um, with Lisa look alike sound alike this topic is easy and simple but need a lot of precautions this is from Lisa yes or essential safety requirements this is like medication error this is also from I like high laser medication order and hazards medication and chemicals. Learning objective by the end of this um, lectures, we will know definition of laser, storage, prescribing, dispensing, and administration monitoring. Let us start with what is laser? Look alike sound line is medication that involves visually similar in physical appearance or packaging of names of medications that have a spelling similarity or similar phonetics, like these pictures. Similar in package, see this photo. This is the solucrative, and the other is Solimedrol. See in these pictures, this is same in package. See, this is same also in the first, the first, uh, first, first part of the name, and also same package. But this example. Similarity in phonetics. Sentinol, C, and Dicinol and Bull. Before, in, in one hospital, in a big hospital, this is a very huge medical error. This is before one admission male patient. This is a prohibited uh, verb telephone order for less than medications. Doctor order for this patient. This is a male. This is prohibited um, a telephone order for this patient for uh, this uh, less, than medic less than medications. This is doctor order for this patient by Sinon and Wolf. Okay. The nurse heard this medication as sent to Sinon and Wolf. This is doctor order for hair. Dicinol and wool. This, patient, this um, nurse heard this patient centosinol and wool. This patient gives this, uh, this nurse give for this patient centosinol and wool. And this make for him a very, very colic pain for him. And this is a very big mistake for, him, for this last time from the case. How can we prevent medication error from LASA? Let us know what is the common risk factors from LASA. Eligible handwriting, incomplete knowledge of drug names, newly available products, similar packaging or labeling, similar strength, dosage, forms, frequency of administration, with similar clinical use. How can we prevent or decrease the medication error of less? To know the, the how can we prevent the medication error from less? Let us know how can we put safeguards for storage, prescribing, dispensing, administration, monitoring, and evaluation. During storage, we can use tall man technique. What is the tall man technique? I think some audience know, uh, don't know what is the tall man technique. Tall man technique, this is like this in this slides, some letters up and some letters down. This is a technique to differentiate between what is, um, med is the medications, which they are similar in 
um, phonetics. So we can use on the computer system some letters up and some letters down. Also, we can use additional label as every hospital policy. In our policy here in the hospital, we use yellow label and these labels already less a double check. Also, we can use double check and separation in each medication. This medication already stored in room, in, or in room, in separate shelves and already labeled with this yellow labeled. See, and this is outpatient, this is diovane, and this is cool diovane. This is already according to our, our list. This is, we have list in the hospital, posted in every stations with medications. And this is our medication in outpatients. This is stored like this. This is an inpatient stored by same way. How can we prescribe this medication? When the doctor need to prescribe any medication included in the lesser list, this is can prescribe by generic name, not trade name. He can't use any abbreviation for this medication or use any prohibited abbreviation for this medication. Good communications between doctors and uh, pharmacists to know everything about he need. This is verbal and the telephone orders. This is prohibited. And this is verbal and um, verbal order. This is an emergency case only. CPOE is the very good or the best thing to prescribing. The diagnosis and indication must be clear. Dispensing. Review of appropriateness. Like before, we said that appropriateness medication, this is policy of appropriateness. This is a rule of pharmacist and nurse. Check the purpose of indication of use, additional of label of lesser. This is during dispensing. If there is for each ampoule, double check. Double check is a very important policy, must be during dispensing, during preparation, during administration, because this is decreasing error. Administration and monitoring. Also, administration, this is means review of appropriateness, because this is a role of nurse. Also, double check. In case of verbal order, in the case of emergency, after verbal order, if the doctor gave verbal order for the nurse, after finishing, must apply the policy. Read back and make clarification for the policy and document this in the, in the formal of verbal order. How can we monitor and evaluate this? Let's have a must be reviewed and updated at least yearly. How come we can make this by collecting the medication error, which resulting from LASA and review this medication errors and we add or delete. This is according to uh, the, um, this uh, um, uh, list. Continuous education about LESA, evaluate the errors which result from this. This LESA list, this is um, uh, reviewed yearly, and this is approved by Pharmacy and Therapeutic Committee. Our goal is save patient care. This is very simple lectures. Thank you. We, the last lecture is high alert medication. Thank you, Dr. Adina.
تكيد الفردينا في بخصوص وي هاف لوت اوف كويستشن اباوت سي ام اور ذيس كورس اور ويبينار هاف تو سي مي اجريديت اور ان شاء الله حننزل الساعات على طول للناس اللي حضروا بس احنا بنتمنى دائما انه لما وين يو ميك ريجستريشن بوت يور اي دي نمبر رايت لانه اذا كان الرقم غلط ما حتنزل الساعه ويا ريت التقييم جدا مهم بعد اذنكم فعاد سي ام اور ان شاء الله عليها تو سي ام اور ان شاء الله وبرضه جانا سؤال ثاني بخصوص هل حيكون في سكند بارت فور ذيس كورس الدكتوره ايمان والدكتوره دينا وعدونا انه يكون في ليفل سكند ليفل فور ذيس كورس ان شاء الله حنعلن عنه قريبا ان شاء الله بجهود الدكتوره ايمان والدكتوره دينا ان شاء الله Hi, alert medication or ham. This is the last issue, but this is a very important issue. This is the one of international patient safety rules. This is the high alert. Also, this is from essential safety requirements. By the end of this lectures, we will know, identify the high alert medication. Classification and the categories, the precautions and the recommendations. What is the high alert medication? This is a medication, but this is high heightened risk of causing significant harm for the patient or death, but when it is used in error. So this is medication that are involved in high percentage of errors or sentinel events. The common risk factors of this high alert medication is poorly written medication error orders, incorrect dilution procedures, confusion between intramuscular and intravenous, intrathecal and epidural preparations, confusion between different trends of the same medications, wrong infusion rate, if there is similar fit, sound alike or look alike packaging, and also high alert. Classification and the categories of the high alert this is antithrombotic agents like uh, heparin, warfarin, like this, adrenergic agonist and, and, and uh, adrenergic antagonist. Adrenergic agonist, the adrenaline, noradrenaline, the antagonist, the propranolone. Chemotherapy agents, parenteral and oral, inotropic medications, the dopamine, dopamine, IV, concentrated electrolytes, magnesium, calcium, potassium. This is very dangerous. Insulins, moderate sedation agents, neuromuscular blocking agents, parenteral nutrition, a lot of classifications. High alert medication, how can we prevent or decrease high alert errors due to medication errors? To prevent high alert medication errors, we must know how, can, how we storage the medication, the high alert medication, how can we prescribe the medication error, how can we dispense and preparing the medication error, the medication, the high alert medication. How can we make labeling? This is this is a very important thing. How can we administer it? And after that, the documentation of high alert medication. Storage. Look at this photo. This is the wrong, the, this is the right way to make storage and labeling for the high alert medications. See, this is the, the right way to put the label of high alert. To store the high alert medication, it must be in separate room 
locked cabinet if this available especially in narcotic medication because all narcotic is highly allergic medications and other medication put in the separate room okay labeled according to every pol in every policy of the hospital in our policy here we put red label and this is according i think this is um, any uh, famous in all hospitals this is red because this is uh, very important so i think all hospitals is, you know, choose the red label must be you know, put label in every in each um, uh, each um, wall, if, um, in separate room and label lock the cabinet with separate room must be labeled in in each ampoule. See, this is the photo for um, storage in high alert room. This is for um, storage, but how dispensing, it must be in every syringe or every ampoule or every vial. How can we prescribe or ordering? The first or the ideal is CPOE, but competent physician order. But if this is not available, the doctor must write clear order with strength, dose, frequency, root administration, dilution, and infusion. Right. Standard. This is a doctor order. Clear instruction to signature of him, time, and date. This is clear order of high alert medication. Abbreviation not allowed. Verbal order limited only in the emergency case. Telephone order is prohibited. This is for prescribing or for ordering medication. Transcribing. This is a role of pharmacist, especially. Also, he makes double check for ordering, double check for standard order, identified patient, with drug name, or root administration, or dilution, or right, or right patient. Mainly, he make appropriateness rule of him. How can we make dispense or preparing the medication, high alert medication? Dispensing from pharmacy, double check for the medication, for order before, maybe the preparation need IV room, this is if needed, an IV room, this is maybe check before, double check for order before, this is finished, after that, double check red label for each ampoule. After preparing, after that, we start to make administration. This is the role of nurses. They will make medication appropriateness, turn rights for before administration, comparing the label with product they, that they received already from pharmacy with medication sheet documentation. Documentation, this is according to every policy in the hospital. But the idea is double check, especially in high alert medication. Documentation after administration. Double check in the medication sheet. It means when the patient received the medication of high alert, it means double check from nurses. Means witness from nurses. Okay, this is the idea. Check vital signs. This is before and after receiving high alert medication. Keep antidote available in case of receiving wrong medication, high alert medication. In case of make wrong medication of high alert medication, correct action before reporting the medication error within 24 hours. After that, we will take action for reporting after 24 hours to collect the data and make what is error happened, why, 
Uh-huh. Recommendation for high alert medication to know is to know. Double check is a very important thing to decrease the error from less from high alert medication from medication error. Appropriateness is very important thing. And this is um, the role of pharmacist before transcribing to check the order of the doctors and the good communication between pharmacists and the doctors. And appropriateness is the role also of nurses before administration. Make 10 rights for nurses before administration for the patient. Speak up. Don't afraid when you make error or when you catch error. Reporting within 24 hours, but try to correct the errors before your reporting. Document everything you see it. Thank you and everything you need. You can make questions. And the last thing we will give you the home message for this PMS with Dr. Iman. And me and Dr. Iman will give you the home message of BMS course. Thank you, Dr. Adina, for this very informative lecture. Um, now we are about to finish. As Dr. Adina said, um, we have just one minute as a home, uh, a home message, and we'll go uh, to the last session to answer some questions. message remember safety first high alert medication must be made double check remember that the medication safety need to change our thinking from who did it to how does it happen you must make you must ask patient about everything to document it in the file before admin, before make admission for the patient. Consider patient rights. Speak up, don't afraid. Do not abbreviate safety. To err is human. Implement just culture. First, do no Reporting is a key to improve medication safety. Our goal is safe patient care. Remember that everyone has a role to play in medication safety. And finally, medication safety is the role of our responsibility. Thank you very much. And uh, if, if you have any question, we are ready to answer it. Thank you, Dr. Dina. Thank you, uh, Dr. Iman. I think we have only five minutes if, uh, if, if there is any questions or something like this. Uh, first, I want to thank all the um, attendees. attendees for this um, um, yeah, good response. I, I really appreciate your thanks and um, uh, we really like that you are uh, enthusiastic about uh, um, uh, having a second part of the course. Inshallah, we will consider it. Um, uh, I will just... Um, 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 consider some of the question. The first question, um, um, uh, what is the difference between adverse drug reaction and adverse drug event? Uh, adverse drug event is a broad, more broad than adverse drug reaction. Actually, adverse drug event, any event related to the medication, which include medication error, near miss, drug-drug interaction, uh, adverse drug reaction, okay? So adverse drug reaction is under the adverse drug event. Uh, the second part is uh, the second question for Dr. Adina. 
وان وان تو يعني نو اف ذا رول اوف اندبندنت دبل تشيك ان ميديكيشن سيفتي ديورينج ديسبنسينج اندبندنت دبل تشيك اندبندنت دبل تشيك اندبندنت دبل تشيك It's a part of. Part of. This is independent double check. It's a part of image. How it will affect medication safety? No, independent double check. It's most. It is. I mean, double check is the most important thing in the medication safety. It is decrease the error of all things. It's decrease the error of high alert medication and decrease the error of less medication and decrease everything. The third question is um, uh, quality management uh, will assist to reduce error. Um, Dr. Adina, sure, I think, think this is, uh, well, it's this logic, is logic. Yeah, medication safety program <laughs> is uh, under uh, quality. quality. Uh, okay. Um, the last question, uh, one asks if there is a drug event uh, happened to the patient due to error. This consider uh, a crime, a criminal, or it's a human error? This is a human error. This is um, I I need to يعني, um, يعني give you one message. Uh, يعني, error. This is seventy percent. This is from the system, not from the 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 home. So the last message we already give to you. We need to change. Who make error to what? يعني, how to uh, يعني, make the يعني, how to um, how to Make the um, how to make or uh, how to already um, how to report. Um, how, how, um, how to to air as you said that to air is human. So to how to make the culture of the من who to how. Not that we are trying to figure out who made the error. Also, uh, Dr. Adina, I want uh, to add that, um, as Dr. Adina said, the to air is human, uh, but after uh, the rule of reporting, there is a rule for uh, medication, medication safety, safety committee, committee, and quality, quality department, department, they department. They department. Analysis, analysis for this error, error. and they but consider this is, um, uh, reckless. Uh, yes. How do you say that the work is error? It's not a crime. Thank you, Dr. Adina. Um, uh, thanks, Mr. Adina. Thank you, Mr. Adina. شكرا شكرا دكتور دينا شكرا دكتور ايمان ثانك يو اور ايمننت دكتور دكتور دينا اند دكتور ايمان ان شاء الله ويل سي اول ذا يو اور ديرست بارتيسيبنت ان ذا سكند بارت اوف 